Hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, I'm a mentor on Team 3260 Sharp and 3504 Girls of Steel. And today I'm here with Robot in Three Days Team Redux, and we're gonna be going over one of our uh, mechanisms for interacting with the cones and the cubes, uh, and then how we've uh, improved upon the design that we started off with uh, a few days ago, and where we are at now, and then where we're gonna be going in the future. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Stryker is one of the world-leading medical technology companies and is driven to help make healthcare better. Stryker's commitment to innovation has made it a career destination for engineering professionals. Click the link in the description box below or go to careers.stryker.com to discover your next opportunity. So some of the changes that we've made to the design are shrinking down the paddle wheels here. We also uh, put the bearings into the paddle wheels themselves so that they spin more freely now. Um, we also added on two pistons now instead of a single piston uh, so that we can have it become more compact uh, and then expand out further. Uh, and one of the problems that we're running into right now with integrating it into the rest of the robot is uh, it's a, like a few inches too wide. So we're going to be cutting this down uh, shorter uh, and then uh, we will be able to have it actually go through some of the other areas of the robot. Um, <clears throat> So I guess we can go ahead and uh, try it out now. So. So one of the things that we did with this design is having the ability to go over the head. Uh, I guess we may have uh, gripped it a little bit low there. So we had to add these cutouts here for the flange of the cones base to be able to pass through this area here. Uh, and we also needed to make sure that we had enough space here for the cone to actually be able to swing through as well. Uh, and I guess we can go ahead and try swinging it left and right and then uh, up and down. So currently the intent is that we will have an intake on our robot that's going to put the cones into our robot and have them either like this or like this inside of our robot. And then we will pick them up from there and then swing them over our robot and then onto the goals. So some of the changes that we've made from the last design is we switched from the Aegis rail because we only had one carriage. We uh, switched over to these uh, linear slides that we got off of Amazon or one of the local teams got off of Amazon. Um, they seem to be working pretty well. Um, we had to also uh, improvise because we didn't have a long enough rail that uh, we um, could use. So we had two rails here instead now. Uh, so some of the concerns that we have on this design right now are that we have these long lever arms on these small linear slides. Uh, and you can actually see that uh, it's a really long lever and it's able to cant over a little bit right now. Uh, and we're worried that uh, over time, uh, these might crack uh, or have some issues. Um, right now we're doing robot in three days. So it's what we have in house and we're going to just run with it for uh, us, but we might consider uh, switching these out to something more robust in the future. So whenever you're wiring up pneumatics, uh, we often on our teams will use different colors uh, going to different sides of your pistons so that you can organize and just by glancing at your uh, pneumatic tubing, you'll be able to see where your lines are going. So uh, on Sharp, we go ahead and have a high pressure color, low pressure color for the main runs so that you can tell whether a system is high pressure at 120 PSI, low pressure at 60 PSI, or uh, at another pressure, working pressure. Um, and then whenever you're going from your solenoid to your, uh, to your cylinders, uh, you can have different colors 
to each one of the actuation uh, points. We also have these uh, needle valves on all of the cylinders so that uh, you can slow down the flow rate to the uh, cylinder without affecting the end pressure. So one of the things that we recommend whenever you're uh, cutting your pneumatic tubing is not using a pair of uh, wire cutters because whenever you cut it, you're gonna crush the tubing and then also you're not gonna necessarily cut it at an exact uh, flush angle uh, to the rest of the tube. And then you end up with a jagged end that isn't gonna necessarily seal well inside of your push connect fittings. So we recommend getting a uh, specific pneumatic tube cutter. Uh, there's a number of varieties. There are some that go around and then you twist. Uh, this one is just a razor blade, cuts through, and then you have a nice flush cut that is perpendicular to the rest of the tube. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out all of the other videos that we have on Fun's YouTube channel. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Stryker is one of the world leading medical technology companies and is driven to help make healthcare better. Stryker's commitment to innovation has made it a career destination for engineering professionals. Click the link in the description box below or go to careers.stryker.com to discover your next opportunity. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Thank you to all of our suppliers and sponsors for the Robot in 3 Days Redux and Kettering Bulldogs programs.